Hey everybody, Adam Savage here in my cave with a one day build and a friend. This is the child. This is a recent acquisition from our friends at Sideshow Collectibles. Uh, a really, really beautiful replica of the child from The Mandalorian, which by the time this video is up, will be airing season two. Very exciting. <clears throat> and this, I, I have uh, all sorts of prop replicas. I will tell you that standing figures, while I have a few of them, are not one of the things that I tend to gravitate towards, except in a, con in a case like this. The, the fidelity to the original and the beauty and subtlety of the paint job, and specifically the eyes make me, I'm just in love with this thing. Uh, and today's one day build is, I'm going to modify it slightly. Nothing to do with the paint job itself, but this beautiful cloak, which is really lovely made, and they've gone with multiple textures. I'm gonna assume it's probably very accurate to the film filming original. Um, my one issue with it is it's a little unweathered. Like it just needs a little bit more. Uh, it needs to demonstrate a little bit more abuse and weathering. It's a little clean for me for the Star Wars universe. And since this thing's gonna, live on a shelf here in the cave and keep me company for years, uh, I thought that he should have a, uh, a better cloak. Uh, not a better cloak, sorry. I don't mean to say better because I just, I'm just making small changes. Most people wouldn't know. They'd come and see it once and they'd come and see it again. It would, I would have done this in between and they wouldn't notice the difference, but I will. So today we're going to take a piece of costume fabric and we're gonna age it down ever so much. So the other thing that we're gonna do in this one day build is I'm gonna try out a new tool, specifically uh, this Iowata, Iwata, Iwata, Iwata? Iwata! Uh, this Iwata airbrush and this specific model, the HP-CR Revolution. Um, I've been to two shops this year, Weta Workshop and Animax, where this was their bread and butter airbrush. And when I visit a shop and I see them use a piece of equipment like that, I take note. Uh, at ILM, the bread and butter airbrush was a single action PASH airbrush. Uh, and that's why that's the one that I bought. It's compatible with the replacement parts they had, but it's also, they chose that one based on this whole metric of ease of use, ease of maintenance, uh, expense, et cetera. But I was at Weta in February and they were using these. And then I was at Animax uh, later on and they were using them. And again, this tells me that this might even be a more bulletproof, more flexible airbrush than the one I've been using for the last 20 years. And I wanna find out. I am always willing to bump up a level with my toolage. And when you find a tool that a, that a working shop is using, it's not gonna be a super precious tool. It's going to be one that can survive abuse. I'll get that in just a second. It's gonna be one that can survive some abuse, so we'll see if this can survive some abuse from yours truly. Let's get started. To begin, I think we've got to uh, take this guy's cloak off and um, just see what we're working with here. I felt some wires in here for posability. Oh, okay, there's a cloak. Oh, yep, okay, there's a zipper. Well, <laughs> that's about as easy as you please. We can take the shift knob out of his hand. I may remake that. And they've got one, they suck, oh, look at that. They suck a stitch in there. So there's our dude. Uh, yeah, that is a really straightforward, simple costume. They've got one, one stitch to keep this oriented so you know where it goes. And the rest is, uh, that was way easier than I was afraid it would be. Within toy manufacturing uh, and collectible manufacturing, it is worth taking a look at what they did do in terms of weathering because it's pretty darn good. Uh, understand that there's no way you could make a toy where you could afford to do the kind of subtle weathering that I talk about on Test It all the time. You have to break it down into steps and each of those steps has to be executable by someone you'll never meet. Uh, and so within manufacturing like this, they'll do something like each. So what you can see here is that they did spray 
uh, a little brown airbrush along this seam line. And they did the same thing here. Uh, they did the same thing along the middle here. Each of these would be a step. So as this thing moves down a conveyor belt, one person's there, they do line, and maybe a second person does line, or maybe one person does both of them. But it very much is broken down like that. Um, so when you see a good paint job on a collectible, it really means that whoever managed that project was able to take that paint job and translate it to the format of having it painted by a mass-produced facility. I'm, I'm assuming, look, there are certainly cases where Sideshow, I'm sure, has gone to some bespoke shops and stuff like this. I'm talking in general. Uh, there's even some, like, even underneath this collar, I can see a, a spray of airbrush along the seam. So they've really clearly, the, the, the call went out like, this thing has to really sell. It's lined in a lovely fleece. This is like this uh, a taupe fleece. And I believe I can see that there is some shading around the edges. Yeah, there's some shading here and there. So I'm going to basically be taking this and modifying it a little bit. Here's something I really like. It's lined. It doesn't need to be lined. You pretty much would never see it, but it's lined in fleece. So our little guy here doesn't get cold. Am I even allowed to show that? I think so. <laughs> there are many ways to weather this, as you know. Uh, I could wet the whole thing and then start to hit it with spritzes of acrylic, but I am doing this with airbrush mostly. That's my goal. And if I do it right, you won't even notice. Okay, here's one. These little sleeves inside the sleeves, they're just a little too clean. They would be a lot dirtier. Same thing here. Same thing with this little under collar, his little dicky, his cheater here. It's a really nicely constructed piece. Frank, this, that is fantastic. That is, my hat's off to you guys at Sideshow. Well done. I think it's time for me to get to know my airbrush. Well, uh, I had a snag. I won't be able to do this today because, uh, my Iwata airbrush has a different, it has a different receiver for, for my airbrush hose than my airbrush. So clearly I need a different hose. I'm gonna have to order that. It's gonna come in a couple of days. So yeah, we'll take a break. All right, I, uh, I stopped this video a couple of days ago because I didn't have the right airbrush attachment, but I now have the right airbrush attachment. And now the child and I are going to embark on this project. Um, so just to recap, although I guess the, in the edit, it happened just a couple seconds ago, I'm gonna do some airbrushing and some extra weathering on the child's cloak. It's a beautiful piece of kit. It's well-made, it's really nicely painted but just it's a little bit uh, light in its weathering for my taste. Uh, in the interim, I am also going to fix one of the, my only issue with this beautiful statue that Sideshow has released, and that is the posability of the arms. I inspected it and noticed that there are these screw ports. So uh, I believe, I believe, I believe I can fly. I believe that I will be able to um, take the child apart and add some shoulder and some elbow adjustability for the hands, because that is something that I would really, really like. And I'm going to try and do this without using anything exotic, because I'd like to come up with a methodology that if you bought this figure and you want the arms to be posable, you could also implement in a short period of time. So yeah, let's get started. Yeah, there we go. Now you're ready to see the doctor. There we go. There. Yeah, that's a little bit more respectable. I'll bet you feel a little better. Uh, so, uh, the cloak. So what I've got here is some uh, watered down raw umber and some burnt sienna, two of my favorite weathering colors. Uh, I've got some phthalo green and I've got some chromium oxide green. I'm kind of excited about the chromium oxide green. That's one of the ones I'm hoping to uh, get some meat out of and the first thing I'm going to do 
Whenever you're working with an airbrush, especially one with one of these top cups like this, uh, is you want a place to park it. You want a place to park it. And I tend to end up doing stuff like that, which is not great, but I have this new workbench and it's got these metal parts to it. And I've got these, um, these magnet attachments, which are, they don't stick until you twist them and then they stick pretty good. I'm gonna use this really lightweight one. I'm gonna try and make a quick and dirty little airbrush cradle. So um, here we go. I'm going to, uh, we'll make a U-bend like that. There we go. That's the sole of an airbrush cradle right there. So now the question is, yes. So here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking I will bend it up like, bend it like this. Yup. Yes. And the same like this. Oh yeah, that's we're fast. All right, get rid of that. Okay, so I put this here like this. And I do this, uh, I end up with, yeah, that's not bad. It's not awesome, but it's not bad. That will do. Okay, so there's my. Again, this is a chromium oxide green. These golden acrylics, uh, they're really nice. I, I dig them. They have good saturation. Uh, they're reasonably priced. All right, uh, so what I've got here is I've got the cloak. I've got my Awada airbrush. I poured some raw umber into the Awada. And just to check the flow rate, I'm just gonna... The nice thing about the Awada is it's got a double action. And I know I was saying that double action can be a pain in the ass, but I really like on a low setting here, I've got this set at a low PSI. I've got a lot of control. Yeah, I really like this. I really like the way it works. Um, in addition to that, the other thing I like about this is you can kind of pour a lot of garbage in it and it keeps on spraying. So I'm just gonna take this and look for some of the dirtier spots. Let's see here. I mean, I think that across the bottom, Yeah, there we go. And there are multi, I mean, with the double action, there's all this different variance you have in terms of your flow. You can pull back and get a wider flow. You can go in and get a little, you know, a little dirty bit. That's great. And you really want to mix that kind of stuff up. Mm hmm Also over here where zippers in, that's where stuff gets really dirty. Definitely. That's where you get spots from someone's hand. And let's, uh, let's, Go in and make this a little less uniform. Yeah. Before I continue, I think I'd really like to redress the the child because I really I want to see. Oh, right. First, I got to add some some interesting variants to this guy. So let's let's add some color variants to the little dicky thing here because I don't think it's varied enough. I will do a little like a uh, little neck sweat stains. Very subtle, very subtle. Yeah, see, so that's, that's again, I'm not doing very much at all. Just the subtlest thing. I think he goes on like that. And then right arm. Even just that, their engineering of this cloak to be able to put it on, it says, well done. Well done, Sideshow. Okay, so um, I'm gonna stay away from your head because I don't wanna get any overspray on it. Not at all. I added some dirt there and I wanna add some, ooh, whoops, some to the other side of the equation. OK. 
Okay, I am a, I'm feeling pretty, pretty awesome about that color. And I'm just kind of looking for where the, it looks just a little too clean and I'm just taking it down. I mean, that's kind of like when you back up, when you back up, like, so you can do that kind of thing, but when you back up and do that kind of thing, God, let me show you on a paper towel. Okay. So when you go up close, you can get that kind of spot. When you back up, you can get that kind of spot. See that? See that subtlety? Right? That's... And then you can even go lighter. Yeah, just like that. That right there is, you know, your eye might not even be able to pick that out, but boy, your brain will. Uh, it's like you might not see it directly, but you will notice it. So I'm just going in from way far back and kind of adding in some tonal variants. And it's definitely dirtying up. Oh, 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 I'm running out. Okay, hey, so I think it's actually time to move on to a warmer color. And now I'm going for the uh, raw sienna or burnt sienna. That's what I think what this is. Let's just double check that. Yeah, look at that. So again, I'm not cleaning out my airbrush between this. I'm using these acrylics, which are fabulous for cloth. And I am just, oh, ah, that was a little much. That was a little too much. Da. Ah, okay, I got ambitious right off the bat and I made a spot that I don't like. So I'm gonna have to deal with that. Um, this color is quite warm, so it shows up very, very quickly. Uh, so I, I'm just gonna try and be very judicious. I gotta add a little more here. Right now, everything feels a little green, which is okay. But I'm just gonna kind of, Tonalize, bring it up a little bit. I think that color is a little too dangerous. So we're gonna go back to the umber. Now I'm bringing this value down a little bit. Yeah, there we go. So one thing I'm gonna try here to get rid of this little warm patch here, this one, is I'm gonna try and add a spot to it. And so I'm gonna practice here. I'm gonna add like a spot kind of like that. So we're gonna. Yeah, okay, so that's just like a little dirt spot. And this is a kind of a way of drawing your eye away from the tonal difference. Yeah. Ah, I had never considered using an airbrush for this kind of, for that kind of dirt, but it's actually working out kind of great. So. If I follow the uh, the line of the sleeve and make that just a little dirtier, I get this kind of little wear line, which is kind of nice and accurate. And then I can follow that along some of the other buckles of fabric, because that is where things would get dirty. I know this is a much more filthy child than the one in the Mandalorian, but, and, I have to say, you know, I, I wasn't necessarily, I've talked about double actions before as more fuss and bother than is necessary, but I'm actually kind of pleased with how this is looking. When you do this for a while, you become sensitized. Like you, you do a thing you like, like I'm really kind of enjoying these spots that I'm adding and they're super subtle, but each time my eye alights upon a few of them, it sees more places where they'd make sense. And some of them I'm doing are so low key that you don't even notice that they're like, once I move away from it, you can't even tell that I was there, but it does, it adds just a little bit of, uh, yeah, it's about moving your eyes in certain directions to notice certain things. Okay, so the inside here is also totally uniform. And now I've made it less so. Oh, I actually done what has actually looks sort of like tarnish on the zipper, which is great. We'll do the same thing to the zipper over here. Getting right into the seam so that when something just looks a little too clean, I'm helping to take care of it.
Um, I've ended up doing much of this with the same kind of color. Actually, I, it looks like they're using the, they use the same color for their seams as I'm doing on this one, which is kind of great. Yeah. Okay, so I definitely think I can uh, darken in here just a little bit. Instead of a broad color on the cloak, it's now a calico. It feels like a lot of dirt has uh, has moved around this child. Yeah, I think I I think there's a little more that deserves to be down there. Uh well. I'm a convert. I'm a convert to the Awada. That, it's terrific. I'm really pleased with how it moves material. I like its sensitivity. I love airbrushing with acrylics on cloth. Uh, later on this year, I'm gonna do some of this with my um, Ghostbusters jumpsuit. What? Yeah, there's a jumpsuit Ghostbusters build that will happen. I know, that was really quick. I, I, I fully get you that that was super quick. Um, we're going to do a, a nice spin on this so you can really see kind of how the paint job worked. And you can see it's, it's very subtle. And I know it's maybe a little hard to see in this light with the, with the light variants on it, but really just what I've done is I've done more of a, yeah, added more texture with the dirt and thought about the narrative of the dirt that it would be on the on the base of his cloak, etc. So now let's talk about um, let's talk about posing him. All right, young child. Let us see exactly how you come apart. Now, I want to be careful because I don't want to harm your beautiful painted bits. So we are going to uh, I'm going to lay down some protection. And I'm going to use some uh, a screwdriver to four, five, six. Ha <laughs> I've got the head. He's got a little bit of, it looks like there's a kind of a resin weight in the middle, which is great. That's just uh, looking to give him a center of gravity that makes him stable. That's really not helping what I'm doing there. The issue here is I thought that the arms went inside and that the capturing of this was how do I say this? I thought that the arms went inside the plastic and so that the screws as they closed the clamshell of the bodies captured the arms, but no, it seems that the arms itself captures these and that there's definitely a screw right here and right here underneath the arm. But the rubber that these arms are made out of is, it's, uh, it's not very pliable. They've filled the head with expanding foam. So my guess is, yeah, that uh, this rubber had some pliability to it and uh, they put the eyes in from behind and then filled it so that you couldn't muck with it, which makes sense. Um, this is really curious. I don't know how I'm gonna get down in there. I may have to just take this thing onto the bandsaw. So the question that I'm grappling with right here is uh, how to get composability out of this guy. And one of the things I'm thinking, these aren't eyeballs. These are actually, I'm thinking of these as uh, sh shoulders. I'm sorry. I'm thinking of these as shoulders uh, like this. 
that go here and here. So I was thinking about maybe cutting away all of this, putting one of these in there. And uh, for the bendability, I'm thinking of this uh, three, what is this? Yeah. This uh, 3 16 armature wire, which you can buy at the art store, you can buy it at Blix, you can buy it on Amazon. We'll include a link in the comments below. But armature wire is effectively um, pure aluminum wire or a very soft aluminum alloy. And it's used in sculpture, in clay sculpture. If you're doing a figure, you would do an armature of the figure underneath the clay because it's a lot to ask clay to support like an outstretched arm. Um, they make it in many different thicknesses. You can buy it very thick, half inch thick. You can buy it super thin, one thirty second of inch thick or even thinner than that. Um, it is a bread and butter maker material. I was thinking of doing this with something less exotic like plumber's tape, which is that uh, metal strip with holes in it that plumbers use to hang pipes and stuff. I know it's weird that it's called plumber's tape. It is one of the most versatile things imaginable because you can like screw stuff together and it was one of the key things that never didn't come out with us on set on Mythbusters. Um, but for this, I think that the armature wire here is, is my deal. I think that's how I want to pose the hands. Um, the, the thing that I'm getting wrapping my head around is I'm I'm going to be in order to get this poseable, I got to slice this and I got to slice that. And if I'm going to slice above the arm, I'm going to, yeah, I just, I want to be careful and methodical as to how I do this because Sideshow has made a beautiful object and I don't want to make it less beautiful with my ministrations on it, as it were. Okay. I've had some time to think. And what I'm thinking is this. I am going to... I can't really change his stance, so I think I'm going to cut him like this. I think I'm going to cut these like this. Yeah. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. That leaves me the shoulder shape. That leaves me the kind of the shoulder shape for putting some weight underneath the uh, underneath the, the cloak and it gives me some room for bending the arm. This is fairly stiff wire. Um, so I am gonna need to run it probably through a block that I screw into here. And then I'm gonna need to pot it into the hands and the distance is really critical. So, uh, I am going to, uh, I'm just going to make sure, well, I, I can cut it and cut it and I still know the distance. I don't have to make any drawings or anything. Okay. Uh, yeah, I guess it's... My friends at Sideshow, I hope it's not too awful for you to watch me cut into your lovely creation. It is all with the aim to show off its beauty even more. Here we go. Right, so here's what I meant by the arm. So I thought that this was captured inside here, like these two halves came down onto there, but you can see in here, that's a screw boss. And that means there's a screw right under here. So this, this means that this was popped on top of that. Um, yeah, I, I'm not exactly sure why, but companies go through a fair bit of trouble sometimes to make sure it's harder to take things apart. And you know, they, they've succeeded here but I can still win. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, I am going to, it really is, the elbow is really right about there. So I'm gonna just slice it right above, I'm not gonna cut into any of this beautifully painted 
sculpted uh, skin, but I'm going to cut right off the edge of it. Yeah, right off the edge there. And you can see the screw boss that I was talking about right there. There's, um, again, like I said, they included a block of material right here in the child's belly to give it, I think, a, a good center of gravity. Um, and that might mean that it's a reasonable thing for me to kind of try and drill into. Um, and if that's the case, then what I could end up almost doing First things first is to see if I can get a, uh, a sheet metal screw or some similar variant to like really suck in there. If that's the case, that makes my job pretty easy because I can then mount a block in there and that block can have uh, adjustable slides for a pair of arms. Then I'm going to uh, drill some 3 16 holes in these and pot the armature wire in there. That'll give me the arms and the cloak has so much body to it i don't really need to worry about there being mass around that sometimes you might take foam and move it around and you know put tape around that so you get the same arm mass but frankly these this cloak is has so much meat to it that's not necessary for this for this gag i have to say i really love these little makita 12 volt line drivers they're just great and i'm really sad they don't make them anymore uh, okay, so I'm just going to see if I can. not No, no, that's just. See, one of the things is I need I need a solid mounting point in here because I need something to torque against as I move the arms. And if I don't have that, well, that's a problem. Uh, oh, I know what I can do. You don't see these legs. I'm going to slice. Yeah, I'm going to slice right. Yeah. Okay, wait, I think I can do that. Let's use one of my nearly zero kerf blades and we'll just uh okay great there's that okay so he'll still be able to stand up i'll just be able to pull his back off okay so this is what I was talking about, about the center of gravity. Great, so now he comes across. Yes, that's great, he'll pop back together. But the question is, how do I mount into this thing? I think I've got to cut a hole here. So that, having just drilled into it, it's like a polyester block. Yeah, it's definitely a polyester block, but, and it is for altering the center of gravity and making it lower, but it's not solid. It's just this hollow, it looks like they, they poured this into a mold and did a kind of turn around because it's about an eighth of an inch thick all the way around up here. And then down here, I can see that it's like mostly solid kind of here and down. So oh, they made a form and did a little rotational rotational uh, pull. Oh, actually, I wonder if I can get this out. Oh, I think I can. Yeah, there we are. Right, okay, so yeah, they had this big chunk of glue in here and they just went like that to get that in. So, so all I really have to do is come up with a method for mounting into this guy and then sock it back in. And that's actually not that difficult. So first things first, I wanna be able to, uh, right, I wanna pot the two arms. Um, so. In one hand, we have another hand. Uh, we are going to measure this stuff here and see it is one, eight, seven, five, so that's, 
we are just gonna, I'm just gonna go in here on the inside and choose something. So I'm gonna go on the inside. I'm just gonna drill on down. Okay, so got a nice hole in there. And we'll do the same thing on this guy. We'll just drill a little hole right. As I thought, the rest of this hand, as I thought, the rest of this hand is hollow. So once I push past that, I uh, I got into the um, into the hollow spot. So I'm going to use a little cyanoacrylate to hold the armature wire in there, uh, and I'm going to cut two long. I'm going to cut two long pieces of this. You can cut armature wire with anything. A pair of uh, pair of flush cutters, pair of nippers, all that works just great. And I'm cutting these overly long because it's always possible to take away. It is really hard to add. Um, I am also going to, since I'm about to sock these in here like that, I'm also going to, oh yeah, okay. So I'm gonna put that there and put that there and then I'm gonna mark this. Huh. I'm gonna mark this right there, and I'm gonna mark this right here. I'm guessing they're roughly the same. They are. And right about where I'm gluing it, I'm going to take this over to the belt sander and add a little tooth here so the cyanoacrylate glue can grab onto something. That way this won't maybe twist and work its way out. Here. Get a little CA glue right in here. Not going to be that precious about it. Jam this in there. And I'm going to put a little CA glue on top of it. And that way I've got it across the whole equation. And I'm going to give a little kick of some activator. I got a little spray on the hand which normally I shouldn't because you never know what could react. Uh, and I'm going to get a little more, a little more glue in there and a little more activator. Okay, I'm going to let that set over here and we're going to get the other one. And this time I'm actually going to activate the, the piece I'm jamming in. Great. I'm going to add a little more CA. So if this is the front, right? So that's, there we go. That's how he stands. So the hand is going to sit somewhere here like this. And I almost could like, I almost could do that and have this come down. I could drill two holes here and sock those in. Yeah, I, I like that. That's a nice positive grab. And it gives me a lot of room to, to muck around with the arms a little bit. I can even change their lengths if I need to. Um, so, oh well, yeah, let's see here. A little, and a little more, wait a second. Wow, this thing is so much less, I, 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 I don't think my, I don't think my idea works because I don't have any meat. I don't have any meat. Um, oh, see if I. I thought that would be thicker, but it's not. Oh, wait a second, wait a second. No, even that's not enough meat. What the, what the, what? Okay, wait, oh, there's my meat. There it is, it's here. It's here, it's in the belly. Yes, there we go. That's where it is.
Um, the other thing is, just to let you know, you could do this with coat hanger wire if you wanted to. Uh, I like armature wire because it's uh, posable and reposable, but uh, you could do this with coat hanger wire if you secured it correctly. So that's the front. No, that's the front. Okay, so that, yeah, right. That goes like that. And then that goes like that. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. See that? Perfect. Okay. Uh, right. I need to pop that there because I need to put the head on. Yeah. So let's get the head on there. Great. And screw screws and screwdriver. First one's away. Huzzah. Yeah, this is all really easy to do with basic hand tools. Uh, again, because the cloak covers so much of the baby's, of the child's physiognomy, um, you can get away with a fair bit, I think you've seen. Uh, you could even use lock line for his arms if you wanted to, but that's kind of the expensive and fancy way to go. <laughs> He's ready for action. Ladies and gentlemen, je vous présente. Les filles. So, uh, then he's got that. Dickie's cheater on there. Now, I've changed the orientation of the arms, which means dressing him might be a little more tricky. Um, it's plausible that they chose the position of the arms to make it dressable in the cloak that they have. Again, they're balancing all of these things between look and cost, etc., cetera. Um, and balancing them quite well, in my humble opinion. Yeah, you, you are a fashionable alien looking for your people. So I think, see, this is what we can do here is now you can see the thing. And when he wants to use the force, look at that, see that? Oh, he's ready to use the force. Let's get the posing, right? I think that, um, so there's a, basically inside the collar here, there's a wire that comes around here and goes around there and it does the same, same thing here. Uh, oh, it ends here. Okay, so it comes across the top and ends there. So I actually found that like letting it wrinkle like that, not great. Better to give it a little bit of like kind of fullness and the same thing on the other side. Plus you can get this wider oval, which frankly I think looks a little bit better. One of the rare pleasures for me is taking a toy that's great and making it even better. And Sideshow has done an exemplary job with this child this is a really lovely piece. And uh, I hope I have their forbearance in what I consider some small improvements. And I think I've spelled out why, you know, all the choices that they have to make when releasing a product like this. Um, but I'm really pleased with, I think, bringing out the beautiful object that Sideshow has created and making it even perhaps a little more. A little, a little more. Uh, yeah, it's, it's cloak suitably filthy, which is great. I think this would, does that stick down there? It's hard to say, I don't know. Um, I need to, I think the next stage is one of those little Mandalorian necklaces. So, yeah, a long way of saying, I, I'd like to imagine that what I did here was I took something that was already beautiful and I just made it slightly more beautiful. 
um, which is easy when you start with something that's already great. Um, Sideshow, thanks for making this. You guys, thanks for joining me. Uh, I appreciate, uh, I hope this was a useful one day build and I will see you next time. Hey everybody, Norm here from Tested, and thank you so much for watching today's One Day Build. I have two more things related to this project to let you know about. Uh, first off, while the modifications that Adam did uh, really add so much to the, the, the personality of this figure, being able to pose the arms, you know, just gives the extra bit of intent uh, and fun. Uh, there's something more you can do as well. Uh, some people who've watched our unboxing, and even when I saw the prototype of this uh, from like see effects, uh, notice that the cheeks are a little bit flush, a little bit red. And while this is totally accurate to the way the puppet was designed for the show, after it's filmed and after there's color grading done and after it's, you see it on the screen, how you perceive it on the screen versus how you see it in person may be different. And so it's all about you know modifying your collectibles and your toys to your personal preference. And so you can actually tone down the redness of the cheeks. Uh, we look at this material and this feels like, you know, like a tinted green vinyl, which on top of that, the artists have done some stippling to add some of those spots to kind of break up that green texture. And then finally, on top of that is that redness that you see around the eyes, on the nose, even in the mouth, and of course, in the pores and on the cheeks that makes Baby Yoda look a little bit more flush. It's an extra bit of dimensionality. And you can actually take off that red really simply. You can just get a little bit of water, you know, put it on your thumb and dab it a little bit and then really just slowly blend it by rubbing it off with your thumb. Occasionally taking something like a Kim wipe or a paper towel and then kind of moving it off of the cheeks a little bit. You know, it doesn't take a lot um, to actually remove it. And I would say go both on the left side and the right side back and forth so you can match up because it is really easy to take a lot away. Uh, now, because the red does seep into the pores a little bit, what you could also do, and do this at your own risk because you can't go back, is to do maybe a mixture of 50% uh, uh, rubbing alcohol and 50% water uh, and wear gloves, of course, and then do that for more intense or removal of the redness. But you go as far as you like. Something we always recommend is have your phone at the ready, be able to look at the figure under the camera lens of your phone because it will look different to that than to the eye and make this figure your own. Uh, one more thing, this one is the one, my figure that I modified after uh, seeing Adams in the cave, and we documented that whole process for tested members. So uh, there's a link below to that video where we go through the step-by-step -step process of taking the child apart, adding the armature, painting up his tunic, and hope you enjoy that as well. Once again, thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you for supporting us, and we'll see you next time. Bye.